Awesome. Thank you. Um, if you are on, if you're able to turn your camera on so we can see your face. And if you cannot, that is completely fine. But thank you so much for joining us this week for our Tuesday night call. My name is Lauren Wenzel and I am a Sapphire with Plexus. I've been with Plexus for a little over six years now. And I'm excited for it to be my week to talk and we're gonna open things up. I'm gonna turn it over to my guest who so graciously agreed to come and join me and talk tonight. And this is um, Daylin. She is newer to Plexus. She is crushing it. She's already earned the cruise contest and she just hit fast start senior gold at the end of May or toward the end of May. It wasn't even like on the deadline in the 11th hour. It was like several days early. So <laughs> she is doing absolutely amazing. And I'm really excited to have her on here. So y'all can hear from somebody who hasn't been around for a really long time um, and just kind of hear about what's working for her. So Dalen, if you want to unmute yourself and um, if you want to just kind of tell everybody like a little bit about yourself, but then additionally, um, uh oh. <laughs> okay, hold on. Okay, I guess we're gonna do this in the house now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so I told him you want to stay out of the front yard if he comes to the front yard. <laughs> no worries. Um, but if you just want to share a little bit about yourself and um, then just kind of share like what your Plexus story is thus far, since it is a little newer and fresher, um, like how you got started in sharing, what attracted you originally, just all the things, whatever you wanna share. All right, so um, to be honest, I started, I did Plexus a few years ago, um, did not work for me. Um, and then my friend messaged me and she's like, hey, I'm doing Plexus. Um, you know, will you, would you want to do it with me? Be my accountability partner. And I'm like, no, didn't work for me. Tried it. Not my thing. Not doing it again. She's like, well, please, will you just do it? And I was like, you know what? I'll do it. And this time I'm like, you know what? You're um, and the thing when you take products every day, instantly, it actually works. Day one, hold on, hold on just a second. <laughs> Here. I don't know if you can hear me fine, but you are cutting out quite a bit and I want people to be able to hear you. Um, I don't know if it's Wi-Fi. Sometimes I disconnect from my Wi-Fi when I do these if you're able to. Uh-oh. I want everybody to be able to hear this because it's she's got a cool story. Can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you, yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like waiting just to make sure. Okay. No, so, you're fine. You, um, from what I had heard, and I would assume it was the same for everybody else, that your friend had asked you to basically try Plexus again, be her accountability partner, and you were a little hesitant about it. Yes. Um, just like, let me turn the light on where I'm at, maybe. I don't know. I still don't know the lights in my house. <laughs> um. And I was really hesitant about doing it. And then um, come to find out when you do something consistently, it works. Um, and I right off the bat had like amazing results. And they kind of messaged me like, hey, like, do you want to be a brand ambassador? I'm like, no, like I just kind of did it to be an accountability partner. And then I saw that I could get an iPad and I'm like, yeah, you know, let's try it for an iPad. Um, got on my iPad and pretty much I just like I just went running with it um, and 
I hit senior gold, like you said, last month. Um, and when you had messaged me and asked if I could do this, um, you kind of, I was like, you know, what, what do I say? What do I do? Because I was really nervous since I am so new to all this stuff. She's like, you know, just explain, you know, how you ranked up and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, I ranked up and I hit senior gold before I even knew what senior gold was. <laughs> um, so everything has just gone really fast for me. Um, but I'm super thankful for everybody that has helped me. This group is amazing. Um, and I can't thank you guys all enough, but Flexus has, I don't even know how to explain it. Like it's, there's so many doors that it's open for me. Um, I didn't realize that I was the type of person to be so open to other people about my journey. And I'm learning things about myself that I never even knew about myself. So, so yeah, it's amazing. And yes, I earned the cruise. And when they first came out with that cruise, I was like, there's no way I'm ever going to get this. And I got it the first month. <laughs> so I was super excited about that. That's awesome. So what would you say, like at this point in time, um, because you're what, like two, th two months, three months into sharing, correct? Yeah. Yep. Three what months. Was, okay. So you're three months into sharing. You've already quadruple ranked. Yes. <laughs> Fast start in like a very short window of time. So for me, like senior gold, it took me, I think two years or something or a year and a half. I don't know, a year and a half, something like that. Um, I'd have to go back and look at my dates, but for me to get to senior gold. And so this is like a really accelerated window of time for you to be achieving what you're achieving. So not only your rank ups, which is contributing financially in massive ways to your family, but now you've earned this cruise and you get to go to the Caribbean. Um, what would you say or share with all the people on this call in terms of like what you feel like is working really well for you at this point in time for the last three months since you started sharing? One thing that I feel is kind of like my strong point is I really try to make my post not uh, all about Plexus. Like today I made a post, I got a new shirt. It was Morgan Wallen and I made the post about that. And then at the end, I added like a little, little tidbit that was like, I, I forget exactly what I said, but it was, it was like having to like start buying smaller sizes of shirts because my shirt literally was a dress on me and three months ago, that shirt was tight on, like that size of shirt was tight on me. I, an extra large was, I did not feel comfortable in it. I was constantly pulling it and now it looks like a dress. So I feel like my strong point is I, my posts aren't straight up directed at Plexus. It's a life moment. And then I throw Plexus in it. <laughs> so I feel like that's one thing that, um, and results I'm actually having results with this and it works like at one point I was like I was talking to six people at once and I'm like ah, I don't know what to do right now so I was messaging my upline so I was like how do I do this what do I do and they're like just keep doing what you're doing and um never be afraid to go and ask for help like if you don't know when you're don't don't be afraid to be like hey i'm not doing my offline like don't just guess the answer so true i think just to recap because you were breaking up a little bit again but i think i caught and sorry it's okay too um i just want to make sure everybody caught that as well but that you're saying like even when you haven't known what to what to do maybe in conversations with people but just like not being afraid to ask questions as you're learning along the way um also like leaning on your uplines your sidelines um whoever else that you need to while you kind of get your bearings and begin helping all of these people um so have you gotten to a point yet i would love to know if you've gotten to a point yet getting to senior gold where you are starting to develop any business builders underneath you, or is this primarily like a lot of, I know you've been doing a really great job with recruiting because I think you recruited like in the teens last month, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, I hit 20 last month. <laughs> oh my gosh, dang. Okay. So 20 yeah, people, was... 
that's huge. <laughs> but um, additionally, like, do you feel like you're getting to a point now where you are starting to share the business opportunity with your customers, um, offering that to them or their referral link? Are you incorporating those things? Or at this point, are you pretty heavily focused on your personal recruitment and just helping people get started on their products? So at first I was just, I wanted like people under myself. Like I was like, no, like I don't, I don't want people under me because I was still learning things myself. And how do you coach somebody when you're don't even know the basics? Um, and now I am to the point where I would like, like to start getting um, some business builders with me. I do have one girl that she's um, uh, doing it with me and everything. Um, she wanted to start out slow. She messaged me at the very beginning and told me some things going on. And she's like, I just want to go slow. And I mean, her slow was four people in the first two weeks. So I was super proud of her for that. Um, but I, I do really want to start focusing on getting people underneath me um, and having them share because there's so many other people. I mean, I can only reach the people that I know, the people I have on my Facebook. Um, I did have one girl. I still do not know her from Adam. She found me and she messaged me on Facebook and she signed up and I, I still, I don't know how she found me. Um, but no, I do because I can only reach so many people and I want everybody to know about Plexus because it's done so much for me and my family. Um, so I do want to start, sorry, my daughter's crying in her room. Aww. I was like, it's time for bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so no, I, I do want to start focusing on that. So, but yeah, right yeah. now it's just, I feel like a one man band and I'm like, Ooh, it's, get, it's getting to be a lot. Um, Cause I want to retain the people that I have. I don't want to just sign people up and have it be a sale. I want to retain the people and be able to keep up with all my, all my clients. I, I don't want to just be like, Hey, buy this product from me and then feed them to the wolves. That's happened to me before in prior things that I've done. And I refuse to be that way. So Good. I love that. And, and that's so important in this cruise contest too, with leaders retreat, because, because of the retention piece of it. So when we're thinking business minded, we obviously need to be not just acquiring new customers. And that's one of the ways that we get paid, but we're not just looking to get that $20, $25 BBB payout on the weekly and like their first month. And then great. After that, we're losing those points and we're like one person backwards from getting where we want to be. Um, but retaining those people, continuing to accrue the cruise contest credits um, in terms of continuing to work on your goals um, in regards to the cruise contest. So um, as somebody who is new, last question, because I know you've got kids to tend to, um, but as somebody who is new and you have, I'm pretty sure when I look today, you have been remaining I would say well within like the top 40 on the leaderboard list. And additionally, you've earned you've earned the cruise and then you've earned the first prize tier so far. I'm pretty positive. So correct me if I'm wrong. But what are yep. your plans? Yep, you're the good. Remainder, the remainder of these months now that we're out of the double contest credits. Um, but like I what didn't are, get that. Oops. Did you try? Siri thinks I'm talking to her. Sorry. <laughs> um, what are your plans and your goals for the remainder of the contest period? And, and kind of like at, just as a new person, how do you see that going now that you might have some belief when you originally thought I'm not, there's no way I'm going to get on this ship. Yeah. Um, so my goal now um, is I really want to retain my clients, not so much build any bigger because I don't want to get so big that I am having people fall off the bandwagon. I feel that keeping in contact and having that relationship with people is going to keep the retention and keep them as a client. So that's my big thing right now. And I also like, I feel that if I want to be, if I want to help people get in this business as a business and just not a customer, I want them to see good customer service and how, how I would want how I would want to be treated and how I want them to treat their customers. I don't want the people that I have under me being, oh, buy this, buy this, and then that's it. I want them to have the customer service. So I want to show them what they need to be doing. And if I'm not doing it, how are they going to know? So that's my goal. Um, the next, for the next few months is just retaining who I have and 
practicing and learning things myself still because I did kind of I jumped in and I didn't I didn't know much I mean I'm still learning about the products and I'm messaging my uplines all the time like hey what do I do and so I'm really trying to just focus on retaining who I have and becoming even better at the customer service end of it. Good. I love that. While you obviously continue to share um, and like show up on Facebook and I would assume undoubtedly keep acquiring new customers, but I think that's such a great goal yes. and is totally a viable option for continuing through the remainder of the process, the contest um, because you're still getting credits for it. So it doesn't always have to have this heavy handed emphasis on new recruitment, new recruitment, like you don't have to go out and recruit 20 people in a month. That's fantastic. Um, if that is happening, but the recruitment piece of it, I really love that you're placing such an emphasis on that. And I think that's super important. Emily is asking, thank you. What made you go? Sorry, my phone is sideways. What made you go all in and stay committed to your outcome? What made me go all in? Well, <laughs> Um, first it was, Hey, you can have an iPad and I'm like, really don't want to sell it. I've sold so many things, got the iPad. They're like, Oh, you can get another iPad. I'm like, okay. And it like, even before I got earned that second iPad, I saw more and more results for myself. And I saw what the company, the income, just the products I saw every, every angle was a positive angle coming at me. And the more the more I became involved in this community, it was it blew me away. Like before, I was never the type of person to be like, "Hey, let's go to Hocking Hills, and you're gonna know nobody, and let's <laughs> go." And I not I don't know what it was. Even my husband was shocked that like I woke up that morning. He's like, "You're really going?" And I'm like, "Yeah." Like there's just something about this community, and I really feel like it's it's you guys that kept me and. I just, I don't know. I felt so welcomed and I love it. So I just, I don't know what awesome. made me go all in and stay committed was you guys, to be honest. Like I've never felt so welcomed in a group as I do with you. So that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And that's completely fine. I feel like it's different for everybody. And sometimes that is the piece. Like I've actually had conversations with two people in the last several weeks and they're like I just miss coming to Plexus events like they don't even talk about it publicly anymore they don't sell it they use their products and love them but they're like I literally just miss being around all the women and being a part of the community and sometimes that is like it's just something that people need in their life so yeah thank you so much for thank you sorry about my internet connection <laughs> It's okay. Thank you for bravely sharing tonight and agreeing to get on here so last minute. I appreciate you very, very much. You're welcome. Thank you for asking me. Even yep. though I was so nervous, <laughs> and I'm still nervous. That's okay. Me too. Me too. Then me too. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't you worry. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to shift and we're just going to talk briefly about um, servant leadership. And I want to play like a really brief reel that I came across. I follow Dave Ramsey on Instagram and it just got me thinking about it. And I thought it would be a good topic to cover, um, in terms of just discussing leadership and not necessarily focusing on the cruise contest and those things, cause it's super important. Um, a really important piece of our business as we are building a team, leading people well and serving them. So I'm gonna play this from my computer and hopefully it will be plenty loud enough to hear. Hey Lauren, I made you host if you want to screen share. Uh <laughs> you don't have to, but just in case. No. <laughs> I always think I'm like a tech savvy person and then stuff like that comes up. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't think I can. I, it'll be too much for my phone. I have it right here on my computer. So hopefully it'll be fine. And it's just him standing on a stage anyway. Okay. <laughs> Thank you though. The leader, I thought, uh, I don't think so. I'll sign their check. Okay. I was in a Christian leadership thing. He said, you need to serve your people. You need to be a servant leader. I thought, uh, I don't think so. I'll sign their check. 
don't think I'm serving anybody, buddy. I'm, I'm not buying that because I didn't hear servant. I heard subservient. Serving someone is going to, I'm going to organize this business in such a way that you can prosper and live your dreams while you're on our team. That you get to be all you're supposed to be. As Ken Coleman would say, we're going to get you in the right slot. We're going to get you with the right motivator and plug you into the right situation. I'm serving you by leading you well. That's servant leadership. Okay. So it's like a brief 20 seconds, but I watched it probably four times and I just kept taking in all of the like brevity of what he was saying, but that it carried a lot of weight. And um, as somebody who has been in a position of leadership in various ways in my life um, and throughout my life, even from a young age playing sports, like being named a captain, for me, stepping into leadership has been something that has always been, it, it's felt natural to me. And that's not the case for everybody, but there are so many different ways that you can be a leader and how you develop yourself as a leader really matters. And so that is what I wanted to touch on tonight in terms of talking about servant leadership and what that actually looks like in terms of your plexus business. Um, because it is so different than a regular standard company structure. Um, when we're talking about normal companies, <laughs> normal, you know, the, the structure of things with the CEO, and then you have some executives and management, like all of that is based on title and their rank. And in this structure, in this amazing industry that we're a part of, you can be an absolute leader, no matter what level that you're at. You can be a leader to just a few people when you're a silver or a senior silver, and you have the ability to show up for them and start developing and cultivating those characteristics in yourself at a very early point. And I want that to be something that you take away from this evening is making sure that you are leaning into that. Even if you are somebody who does not innately feel like you are a leader or that you were born and given talents or gifts of being somebody who is considered a leader. Um, additionally, we have John Maxwell who is coming to convention. I hope so many of you are going to Nashville next week. And there are two books that I want to recommend to you. I am not a book reader. These were well worth the time to read. Um, one of them is called Leader Shift. I think Emily just dropped a different book in the comments as well. So check that. Um, this is Leader Shift. It's the 11 essential changes every leader must embrace. That one was a really good one. And then the other one that he has is called and he has lots on leadership but the other one is called the five levels of leadership and this one was super helpful for self-awareness um, i loved reading this one because it talks about um, what he has experienced in leadership throughout his career um, and then also like being a speaker for companies where he can come in and he can see the structure and help them help companies to develop um, to be more effective. So it goes all the way from position. So again, like somebody just holding a certain rank or a title, um, people have to answer answer to them. It doesn't necessarily mean they're a great leader, but because they have that certain title given to them, they have people who have to adhere to what they say. Um, and it goes all the way through the five different levels. And the fifth one he calls the pinnacle. Um, and a lot of this translates over then into the servant leadership that Dave Ramsey was speaking about on his um, reel, his brief reel that he discussed. And so I wanna read a couple of things from here as well. Uh, pinnacle leadership, is basically like a lot of organizations and companies, they struggle to maintain their existence 
as a whole, um, especially in longevity and then just their, like the stability of their organization. Um, so there are a few that rise above the rest. They seem to function at an extraordinarily high level and their secret is leadership. Great organizations have great leaders and that is it. Um, when you get to this point of being what he calls a level five leader and what I would say is definitely somebody who exudes and exhibits servant leadership qualities. Um, they are in a position where it's not just about them and they realize how important it is for them to empower other people to lead larger. For the organization as a whole, it's so important for somebody to be stepping up into a position where they say, listen guys, like." We're all going to row in the same direction together. That's great, but we're going to do it at our best. And we are going to do that because we're going to raise our leadership lid. We're going to continue to work hard in order to be a better version of ourselves because that is what our team deserves. The people who have very graciously signed up with us and trusted us, um, even in terms of like what Daylin was talking about with providing really quality customer care to her VIP is like, obviously that when we're talking about leadership, that is going to be translating into your team that you're developing, but that also is consistent when you're taking care of your customers, the level that you're giving to your customers. Are you serving your customers? Well, are you checking in with them regularly? Are you making sure they're doing okay with their products, that they're happy on their products, that they're spending hundred to $150 of their hard earned money with you each and every month. Um, so empowering people in that way to make sure that they are having a good quality experience and lifting the leadership lid for everybody in the organization. Um, because they produce lots of leaders and continue to do so over the long haul of their careers, their organizations develop an abundance mindset. So when you take the time to teach other people well, and you serve them well, and you help them grow into a position of leadership, they will turn around and do the same thing. Same concept, take care of your customers well, show them what customer care looks like, what it feels like to truly be valued and taken care of. And eventually when they begin their sharing journey, they're gonna know exactly what to do because you served them really well as a customer. Um, in time, leadership becomes part of their DNA. And even when one leader steps down or retires, there are many leaders who are ready and able to take their place because they have a pipeline of leaders being produced. And I really enjoyed that because that's so true. We have people who sometimes walk away. Um, and are you developing leaders deep enough into your organization, not just your level ones, but why relationship building and tap rooting with levels twos, threes, fours, beyond that, like even people that you might not necessarily be getting much of a paycheck for, why that matters so much for people to feel valued and you can have true impact in that way by being a servant leader. Um, the first step in developing leaders, he says, is to have a desire to develop people so that they can succeed without you. So imagine that for a moment, for whatever reason, next week, your I don't know, something, something happens that like you no longer exist within the plexus world, not the world world. We're not going to go that morbid with it, but <laughs> just imagine that for whatever reason, like you can't do plexus anymore. What happens to your people? Do you actually know what happens to your people if you are not there to help them? Have you set them up for success enough and equipped them well enough that they can succeed without you? Because that's really important. That is something for you to marinate on. The ultimate leader is one who is willing to develop people to a point that they eventually surpass him or her in knowledge and ability. That was a quote by a man named Fred Mansky. So, being, being someone who has a willingness to 
want to see your people succeed beyond what you might even envision for yourself. Because of how our business is set up, thankfully, when you help other people succeed in their goals and reaching their goals, you also benefit from that. You also grow from that. You rank up from that. But can you look at your people, whoever is sharing underneath you right now and whoever you're helping to develop and say, I want more for you. And I want more for you than I might even want for myself. I want to help you reach all of your goals and dreams. And I'm going to sit here and work with you day in and day out. And I'm going to equip you and serve you well to make that happen. And I'm not going to give up on that. Um, and I think when it, when it comes to the community aspect and what Daylin was touching on and so many of this, so much of what she talked about bleeds into this topic really well because when she was, when she was talking in terms of serving people and serving her customers, that always is going to translate over and over and over and over again. And when you can basically like, I, what's the other one? There's another book or no, I think it was a Ted talk that I heard and it was leaders eat last. Basically just like you're not necessarily, the leader isn't necessarily the person who like has the spotlight and is standing on the stage. The leader is somebody who's standing in the back of the room and they're watching somebody on stage and they get to say, that's my person. I trained her. I trained her well. I trained her well enough that she's standing on that stage right now and getting to speak. She gets to share her story and she gets to be at a point in her life where this business is impacting her family in the way that it is because I did my job well. And that has nothing to do with necessarily benefiting you, but just focusing on other people. Um, so I don't have any particular tips built out for this call in terms of like things that you can do specifically to be a servant leader. Um, but I think just having the qualities of a servant leader, selflessness, going above and beyond for people at all times, being coachable yourself and continuing to raise your leadership lid, that's super important. Don't ever think that you have learned enough ever. You will hurt yourself massively if you think that you have ever gotten to a point where you know everything. Um, love people, meet them where they're at, be available. That doesn't mean you have to be available 24 seven, but you have to be available and you need to reply to people and show up for them because they need to know that you care. Um, those are just a couple of things that come to mind when I think of what it looks like to be a servant leader. Um, the way that I have been served, the way that I have worked to develop my leadership over the last six years um, to hopefully always be showing up and giving the best version of myself to my team um, as much as I'm able to. So that's all I have. Nothing groundbreaking necessarily, I don't think, but um, it was just such a good reel and it was a really good reminder, just like a wake up call. I guess for me to be like, okay, am I doing my job? Am I actually doing my job? Because I can show up and post about Plexus on my Facebook and I can get on my stories and I can talk and I can do my little boomerang at the gym and I can do all of those things. And those are um, some of the easier things, but taking time to invest in yourself, invest in your leadership skills, and then invest that into your team that's going to take you a really long way in this business. And I wish nothing but that for all of you. So grab these two books. If you don't have them, John Maxwell, five levels of leadership and leadership. And Emily had one that she dropped in the comments as well. So check that out. Um, but otherwise I wish you guys well, can't wait to see so many of you next week at convention. Super excited for that. And Keep crushing it in the cruise contest. That's all. Goodbye.